He was killed while sitting with his friend in a guest house. Kolade Johnson, killed at a football viewing center. Frederick from Edo State, killed during an argument with a policeman. Tiamui Kazim, he was a footballer that was pushed out of a moving SARS vehicle. Ayomide Taiwo, he was killed because he refused to give 50 Naira bribe. Ifoma Ibugu, she was raped and murdered while in detention. During the protest, policemen deployed, killed four more people. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Let our voices be heard. End police brutality. End SARS now. It's very, very sad. Very, very sad how bad this country has gotten and how everyone is out there soliciting for their lives. For me, this is very personal because because 2020 has been a very trial year. From the virus to a lockdown to people not having what to eat and now to this. We're not happy staying outside. I don't think anybody is, is happy peacefully protesting. But if we don't do this, we might never get to enjoy a better Nigeria. On the streets, all saying the same thing. I go for, um, can I get wives? Give me one wife, please. From here, from here. Yeah. So, we've all been on the streets for like over a week. Saying the same thing. Begging for our lives. Literally. There's nothing else. And I say that. How, like, how did we get to this state? Like, how did it get this bad? How did it get this terrible and horrifying? The people out on the street every day for like the, for like the past one week now, jump on a flight, I can, <laughs> if anything happens, 
<clears throat> every time I want to go for my regular checkup, I'll get on my flight, I'll go to London. If I want to go and see a dentist, I'll get on a flight, I'll go to, you know, Turkey, wherever. But when you're in the situation that I just described, you don't have that time. So guess what? It affects all of us, even the rich, even the famous, all of us, even God. Right now, I hope eventually we will. You see, Nigerians, you just, you just know, Nigerians are special people, hardworking, industrial, clever, street smart, funny, loud, happy, loving. But Nigeria is bad. And because, and because we are strong, because we are clever people, because we are, because we are special people, we, we don't realize how bad our country is because we are able to make do with what we have. We're able to, we're able to manage. And now for, for years, for decades, we have not seen how bad Nigeria has gotten because we're not out on the streets protesting for basic needs right now. I hope eventually we will I hope eventually we will get to all of that. I hope we will not get tired and we will continue to fight the good fight. But right now we're not out on the streets asking for light. Or electricity. <laughs> We're not out on the streets asking for water. We're not. <sighs> and these are basic needs. We're used to not having basic needs. So right now we're not fighting for those things. We're not even fighting for health, health care, working adequate health care. I'm not going to lie to you, like, I definitely, I'm blessed, I feel like I'm blessed that, and a lot of people might feel this way. Again, I'm saying this, I'm, I, I'm, I, uh, I'm nervous, I want to talk to you guys, but I'm saying this and don't take it out of context. A lot of people, a lot of privileged people feel that these things don't concern them because they have dual citizenship, they have visas, so last, last, but. I was raped by this class last two years. They extorted money from me too. I told what my crime, my friend. I fresh my crime. I cannot give birth to a daughter in this kind of country. May they not go rape my daughter tomorrow. May they not go shoot my son tomorrow. Now people begin them, they dead for the first days. And for the brutality, what my parents could not do, I did it. And